Hello again. We're up to the last lesson in the fourth class, lesson 4.6 on ensemble learning. So, you know, in real life, when we have important decisions to make, we often choose to make them using a committee, having different experts sitting down together with different perspectives on the problem and letting them vote is often a very effective and robust way of making good decisions. Well, the same is true in machine learning. We can often improve predictive performance by having a bunch of different machine learning methods, all producing classifiers for the same problem and then letting them vote when it comes to classifying an unknown test instance. One of the disadvantages is that this produces output that's hard to analyze. Now, there are actually approaches that try and produce a single comprehensible structure, but uh, we're not going to be looking at any of those. So the output will be hard to analyze, but you often get very good performance. A fairly recent technique in, uh, in uh, machine learning. Uh, so we're going to look at four methods. They're called bagging, randomization, boosting, and stacking and they're all implemented in Weka, of course. So the idea with bagging, we want to produce several different decision structures. Let's say we use uh, J48 to produce decision trees, then we want to produce slightly different decision trees. And we can do that by having several different training sets of the same size. And we can get those by sampling the original set, the original training set. In fact, uh, in bagging, you sample the set with replacement, which means that sometimes you might get two samples, two of the same samples uh, chosen in your sample. So uh, we produce several different training sets, and then we build a model for each one, let's say a decision tree, using the same machine learning scheme or using some other machine learning scheme. And then we combine the predictions of the different models by voting. Uh, or if it's a regression situation, then you would average the result, the numeric result, rather than voting on it. This is uh, very suitable for learning schemes that are called unstable. Unstable learning schemes are ones where a small change in the training data can make a big change in the model. So decision trees are a really good example of this. You can get a decision tree and just make a tiny little change in the training data and get a completely different kind of decision tree. Whereas with naive Bayes, if you think about how naive Bayes works, uh, little changes in the training set aren't going to make much difference to the result of naive Bayes. So that's a stable machine learning method. In Weka, uh, we get bagging classifiers. We're going to the meta set. Here I am in Weka. I'm going to choose meta bagging. Here it is. And. Uh, we can choose here the bag size. This is saying a bag size of 100%. So it's going to sample the training set to get another set the same size, but it's going to sample with replacement. So that means uh, we're going to get different sets of the same size each time we sample. But each set might contain repeats of the original training set. And here we choose which classifier we want to bag, and we can choose the number of bagging iterations here and a random number seed. That's the bagging method. The next one I want to talk about is random forests. So here, instead of randomizing the training data, we randomize the algorithm. And how you randomize the algorithm depends on what the algorithm is. So random forests are when you're using decision tree algorithms. And remember, when we talked about how J48 works, it has to select, it selects the best attribute for splitting on it each time. Well, you can randomize this procedure by not necessarily selecting the very best, but choosing a few of the best options and randomly picking amongst them. That gives you different trees every time. And generally, if you bag decision trees, if you randomize them and bag the result, you, uh, you get better performance. So in Weka, we can look on the tree classifiers, which are down here for random forests. There we go. And uh, again, that's got a bunch of parameters. The maximum depth of the trees produced, uh, I think zero would be unlimited depth. The number of features we're going to use, so we might select, say, four features. Uh, the number of trees we're going to produce, so we'd select from the top four features, is what I mean here. Every time we decide on 
uh, and the decision to put in the tree, we select that from among the best, the top four candidates, the number of trees and so on. Uh, that's random forests. Now here's another kind of algorithm, it's called boosting. And uh, it's iterative. New models are influenced by the performance of previously built models. So basically the idea is that you create a model and then you look at the instances that are misclassified by that model. These are the sort of hard instances to classify, the ones that get wrong. And you put extra weight on those in instances to make a training set for uh, producing the next model in the iteration. This kind of encourages a new model, the next model, to become an expert for instances that were misclassified by all of the earlier models. And you know, the intuitive justification for this is that in a real life committee, committee members should complement each other's expertise by focusing on different uh, aspects of the problem. Uh, in the end, to combine them, we'd use voting. Uh, but uh, we actually weight models according to their performance in boosting. And uh, there's a very good scheme called Adaboost M1, which is in Weka, which is a standard and very good boosting implementation. Often produces excellent results. And uh, there's a few parameters to this as well, the number, typically, uh, in particular, the number of iterations. Okay, the final ensemble learning method is called stacking. And here we're going to have base learners, just like the learners we talked about previously, but we're going to combine them not with voting, but by using a meta-learner, another learner scheme that combines the output of the base learners. So we're going to call the base learners level zero models, and the meta-learner is a level one model. The prediction of the base learners are input to the meta-learner. Typically you use different machine learning schemes as the base learners to get you know, different experts that are good at different things. And then you need to be a little bit careful in the way that you generate data to train the level one model. This involves quite a lot of cross-validation. I won't go into that. In Weka, there's a meta-classifier called stacking. Stacking and stacking C, which is a more efficient version of stacking. Uh, so here's stacking, and uh, you can choose uh, different meta-classifiers here. And, uh, and uh, the number of uh, stacking folds. You can choose different classifiers, different level zero classifiers, and a different meta classifier. Uh, in order to create multiple level zero models, you need to specify a meta classifier as the level zero model. Uh, it gets a little bit complicated. You need to fiddle around with Weka to get that working. Okay, that's it then. So we've been talking about combining multiple models into ensemblers to produce an ensemble learning, and the analogy is with committees of humans. Diversity helps, especially when learners are unstable. And we can create diversity in different ways. In bagging, we create diversity by resampling the training set. In random forests, we create diversity by taking, choosing alternative branches to put in our decision trees. In boosting, we create diversity by focusing on where the existing model makes errors. And in stacking, we combine results from a bunch of different kinds of learners using another learner instead of just voting. Now, there's a chapter in the course text on uh, ensemble learning. It's quite a large topic, really. And uh, there's an activity that you should go and do before we proceed to the next class, the last class in this course. And we'll learn about putting it all together, taking a more global view of the machine learning process. We'll see you then. Bye for now.